This video is going to look at the different biomes found underneath the European ice in Barotrauma. The campaign follows your submarine through different biomes, each getting deeper and more dangerous as you go. Throughout the game, there is a difficulty modifier that will be added to each level that affects the monster difficulty and level spawns. The world generation will spawn different hazards, objects, caves, abyssal vents, and encounters, all of which are randomized. However, this is also dependent on which biome you are in. There are currently a total of five biomes that you will encounter as you make your way through the campaign. Starting off, the first biome is the Cold Caverns. This is the safest biome with minimum encounters or dangerous things that can damage you or the submarine. In fact, this biome is split into four sections that we'll talk about in a second. Visually, this biome is very bleak. It has lots of dark greys to give an icy look in the main area and surrounding caves. For this biome's difficulty range, it's 0 to 15. This difficulty range starts off at 0 at the first station and ends up at 15 at the station that leads into the next biome. In this biome, you will encounter the occasional ice spire. These are long shards of ice that stick out from the ceiling or floor. If you crash into one, it will damage your hulls. And without hull upgrades, this can cause major breaches and flooding to your submarine. You can either avoid them altogether or get one of your turrets to shoot it until it breaks. Each level in this biome should have around five ice spires. And in addition to this, there will be approximately two caves. Although we'll talk about that in another video. There are two primary variations of this level. The first fairly straightforward with a large open space and has a distance between stations of approximately 1500 meters. The second, which is more maze-like, will have double the amount of ice spires and potentially one more cave. But this does sit at a closer range between stations of approximately 1300 meters. Each of these variations has a chance to spawn side tunnels with which will allow you to take a different route. However, these routes are not without risk, as you may get stuck in the smaller tunnels, forcing you to go backwards, or there may be swarms that you won't be able to sail past, forcing you to fight. In addition to the primary variations, we also have the beginner and transition variants. The beginner variation is only for missions from your starting location. It has a much shorter level length, with the distance between stations at approximately 700 meters. And talking about the transition variation, this is located at the end between the two biomes. This level is approximately 1500 meters in length between stations and has the ability to spawn a random wreck in the environment. The next biome is the European Ridge. This biome will not have any ice spires, however, instead you will encounter icebergs. These are small floating pieces of ice that will be spread throughout the level. Again, like the ice spires you can avoid or shoot them. Although do note these take more ammunition to destroy. The difficulty rating for this biome starts at 15 and ends at 35. This biome can spawn three caves and potentially one wreck. The special mention here is there is a 60% chance to spawn an abyssal vent. This will allow you to go below the level and discover abyssal monsters and islands. If you want to know more about abyssal monsters you can check out my monsters guide part 5 links in the video description below in this biome we also see rex having a 10 percent chance of becoming a thalamus monsters guide part 2 if you want to know more as the difficulty level increases you also get access to more missions specifically wreck artifact and level 4 difficulty rated missions the other new addition to this biome is ballast flora can now spawn this is seen on the sonar monitor as small shimmering clouds. If your submarine travels through these clouds in a downwards direction, there is a chance these can attach to your pumps. It's best to avoid this at all costs as dealing with it is time consuming and causes continuous burning damage to anyone near its vines. There are two level variations for this biome. The basic one, which has a station range 
range of approximately 1100 meters and an advanced one at 1300 meters in length. Although do note that level distance does not take into account having to navigate upwards or downwards. Visually, this biome has a lot of small plants all around the rocky formations, as well as inside caves. Moving on, we have the Aphotic Plateau. This is where level distance becomes much longer, with the average distance between stations at around 1900 meters. There is only one level type for this biome, which contains a lot of maze-like patterns. In this biome, we also see the beginning of random alien ruins. The difficulty rating for this biome starts at 35 and ends at 50%. We also see the thalamus probability increase to 30%. Visually, this biome has the largest collection of flora, mostly looking like a mix of hard and soft coral. This biome also sees most of the levels giving the warning symbol for crush depth. To progress through this, you will need to upgrade your hulls. The next biome is the Great Sea. Here, the ice spires return and the iceberg amounts increase to their biggest yet, approximately 20 per level. The distance between stations is increased to the maximum at approximately 2,700 meters. The difficulty rating for this biome is from 50 to 65%, with the thalamus spawn chance now sitting at 40%. In addition to the difficulty rating, Ratings, this biome has a hazard that can instantly kill you and cause major damage to your submarine, the piezo crystal. These electrifying crystals will randomly zap your junction boxes, adding 500 kilowatts of power load. This damages them, causing them to break and in some scenarios catch on fire. This will only happen though if your submarine is within 30 meters from them. You can shoot these crystals and they will explode, but be warned, these do 2,000 1000 structural damage, 300 burning damage, 300 explosive damage, and can stun you for up to 20 seconds. This is all within a range of 10 meters. For the visuals of this biome, it's very similar to the cold caverns. The overall grey icy tones on the walls and general scenery remains, along with the simple wide open spaces. The addition of the piezo crystals adds a more crystal-like feel to the area, as well as some of the background. As a final note for this biome, this will also be the start of requiring better diving suits in the main section of the biome. This is because the regular diving suits are only rated up to 4,000 meters, and the Great Sea starts its depth at 4,000 meters. The final biome is the Hydrothermal Wastes. Visually, this is the most different biome as you will see the rock turn to volcanic glowing stone and the ocean turns to a reddish color. This biome is the most difficult with the rating turned all the way up from 65 to 80 percent, with the distance between two stations again set at approximately 2,700 meters. You can expect frequent double spawns of hammerhead swarms and giant spinding swarms, both of which can take down your submarine very quickly. In addition to this, the chance of spawning a thalamus wreck is increased to 50 percent. A final mention for this section is another hazard that can actually spawn in different biomes, sonar flora. This purple looking plant interrupts your submarine's navigation sonar pings, meaning that you will be unable to get a clear readout of any incoming monsters or the layout of the map. The only way to remove this is to move your submarine away from the sonar flora. The only other thing that can do this in the game is a black moloch. So be extra cautious when you see this happen to your navigation console to not get caught out by a moloch. Be sure to check out the caves guide in the next video. Until next time. Peace. A huge thank you to all my supporters, especially my patrons and YouTube members. Gamerman R gets a huge shout out for joining the Masterwork tier program. Thank you. Yeah, nah, nah.